1981, Jeff Bodine finished third in the final Bush Grand National standings and then made the move up to Winston Cup. He brought with him an innovation that all drivers are now very thankful for. Here's our tech report. When Charles Duryea designed the first American-built gasoline engine vehicle, the steering device used was called a tiller. Even before the steering wheel, drivers like Barney Oldfield felt the urge to compete with other drivers. In 1902, Cadillac was the first American automaker to install a steering wheel on a production vehicle. As the American auto industry evolved, many driver comforts were added, including power steering. In the early days of NASCAR, almost all race cars utilized conventional steering mechanisms. Whether they were on the dirt tracks or early super speedways, the sport's pioneer drivers had a daredevil image that said the only power assist they wanted was horsepower. Although power steering was an option available on nearly every passenger car since the mid-60s, it was Jeff Bodine who introduced power steering to the sport in 1982. I started out using a manual type steering. I, I raced that way and I thought to myself, uh, uh, why don't these guys use power steering on these cars? 500 mile races, the big heavy cars, I mean, uh, it'd be so much easier. And uh, when I went to Cliff Stewart, uh, Daryl Bryant was a crew chief, he said, now we know you use power steering on your late model, and I won a lot of races with it in the late model division back then. And he said, do you want it on this car? And I said, naturally, I think it'll help. And at first, the other teams, the other drivers, crew chiefs thought, well, look at Bodine needs it. He's just a little guy, uh, doesn't have any muscle to drive uh, these big cars without power steering. So they kind of uh, gave me the wimp syndrome. But it wasn't long, and, and Bobby Allison is part of the reason why. He put it on his car and, and proved that it was better. It let you set the car up better. The front end settings were better, so the car handled better. And uh, it's, you know, after they saw he used it and liked it, more and more guys kept putting it on, and right now everyone runs it. It's 100% uh, on every car out here, and, uh, and I'm kind of proud of that. It's, it's something that I brought into the sport, and it's really extended the career of a lot of drivers. And uh, who's that guy that's been winning here lately? Harry Gant probably extended his career a little bit too. In the early days of its high performance use, the power steering mechanisms weren't always reliable, as evidenced by Cale Yarborough's famous blown power steering unit while leading late in the 1985 Southern 500. Bill Elliott made the move below Cale and went on to win the first Winston Million. Today, the units rarely fail. It's almost fail-safe. Uh, uh, very, very few problems with it. Uh, the manufacturers have built pumps just for racing. Uh, they modify them for racing. Uh, the, the reservoirs, the lines, uh, even the fluid, everything is, is just about fail-safe now. The, the steering boxes come right off stock cars. Uh, you get different ratios, different uh, stiffness or softness to the steering. You can really adjust it to any, any driver's needs, and uh, I don't know anyone that has any problems with them right now. They're really a, a good system. With a number of Winston Cup competitors now driving well past the age of 40, Bodine's innovation would have to be considered one of the most important additions to the sport in the past 10 years.